Hi, everybody. Good Hi. evening, everybody. Do you want to sit with you over there? Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Awoye Tempo. I'm a director here in the city, and I'm just so honored to be here. It's Friend Day! Yeah. Yeah. It's Friend Day! Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you all for staying around for the talk back this evening. Um, I wonder if you guys can just tell us a little bit about what you do and also when you first met you. Hi, so I'm Tony Montaneri, and I am Toast in the and um, I run Eve's company, and I'm V-Day's acting campaigns director, I'm the producer for Eve Ansler on this show, and I met Eve 15 years ago when I started working with her. Beautiful, thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Paula, and um, I'm really happy to be here with all of you. I was in the audience tonight, which I am many times, so I'm really, really emotional. Um, and I met Eve in 1986, and I had come from, I just got off a plane from Greenham Common Women's Peace Camp, mm. where I was living for three years outside a missile base via southern Lebanon, where I was photographing the war, and Eve was showcasing her play called The Depot, which was about a woman living outside of a missile base. <laughs> so we immediately recognize the commonality of our work and um, also our mutual passion for civil disobedience. <laughs> nice, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, my name is James Lassine, and I just want to say this is Paula Allen. She's an amazing photographer. Uh, she didn't mention that. Did you oh. mention? She's an incredible photographer, and she's really been chronicling uh, n not only uh, the work of uh, V Day and Eve's career since uh, you know you first met, but also uh, photographing women around the world and their struggles. It's just she has an incredible body of work. Um, so my name is James Lassine. I am uh, an actor. I'm a writer. I'm an activist. Um, I'm the co-founder of the Trevor Project. For those of you who don't know, it's the only national 24-hour suicide prevention and crisis intervention lifeline for LGBT and Christian teens. You know, it's amazing. And you know, the, 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 I was just talking to somebody backstage and the Trevor Project is celebrating its 20th year this year and so is V-Day. Um, and I just, it's, it's so hard to imagine that even I started those organizations 20 years ago. They're like brothers and sisters, you know. It's like the gay brother and the, <laughs> and the activist sister, you know. Uh, but they're still kicking, which is amazing. And I met Eve in about, 19, I think it was 1991 or 92. Uh, everybody told us both we should meet each other. We were like, nah. And then we met, and it was like, Crazy people got scared. Um, we, we I, I'll just tell you this very briefly. The first night we, we was well, like the second night we met, uh, we were literally dancing like gypsies on the table to sort of Romanian music, and everyone in the room was like, What's happening? So we were like uh, brother and sister that were reunited at last. Yes, dancing, dancing on the table um, to Romanian music, as one does. It's <laughs> so good. Um, so I don't know, um, did you guys, were you able to watch the show today? I'm sure you've seen it multiple times. How did, what resonated for you watching it this evening? Um, well, as I was in the audience, something resonates for me every single time, and mm -hmm. I have had the pleasure of seeing this play often. Um, and I get jealous when I'm not sitting in the audience, actually, when I'm not here, <laughs> of everybody who gets to see it. And... You know, I have to say, because tonight, being an audience, and when Eve was talking, um, sharing Cindy mm -hmm. and the farts, and everyone had such a huge reaction to Cindy tonight, so I got very involved <laughs> in the whole part, right, <laughs> about Cindy tonight and other things. And, you know, for me, the, every, what resonates is the willingness of Eve mm. to go as far and deep as she goes into artistry and into integrity and into authenticity. And no matter when I'm watching it, that's an enormous part of the entire experience of being here. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. You know, we were talking today, um, uh, we were in a car together, and we were talking today that mm, no matter where we are, sort of, mm -hmm. I, and I think this is the value of friendship, um, especially in the theater, like no matter where you are, uh, we're thinking like, okay, it's five of eight. Eve's about to go on, or it's five <laughs> of seven, and Eve's about to go on and do this amazing thing. And 
you know, I think it's the value of friendship that you actually stand by your friends even mm -hmm. when you're not there. Yeah. You know, if in the theater, like you, you have a sense, and especially this show, mm -hmm. like, I don't think anyone's thinking about that about all the time with it, you know, Patti LuPone. But, nothing against Patti LuPone, but I just think that there's, you know, this show, it takes such enormous uh, guts yes. and soul to actually get it across. And I think for me, the thing that I always am struck by is, um, it is the scene in which uh, Eve's, uh, with her back to the audience, uh, saying, char me deeply. You know, burn me, burn me, and char me deeply. Because I think for, you know, for I think for all three of us, I'm speaking for you guys, like, we watched Eve go through this experience, and we watched the sort of non-essential parts of her get burned away. And it was truly one of the greatest gifts I've ever been given by a friend to watch that process of somebody let go and let go and let go and be that vulnerable and to keep letting go of what, what really she didn't need. Mm -hmm. And when she came out the other side, it, she was still like more essentially herself, <laughs> but it, it, it was just without all the baggage. Transformed, yeah. Um, everything they said. <laughs> but I think um, what resonates for me is you can't help but go on a, on a journey, with, on this journey with Eve, I think as an audience member, and I, I don't want to speak for anybody, but it's, it's this journey and that she takes you on, but in the, the most open and kindest and gentle way so that it is what it is for you, and that is who Eve is, and that's what friendship is, you know? And I think, I think that the show is, is inviting in, in certain ways and in, in the theme of friendship. Um, that's something that really, resonates heavily. Also, this idea of, to just go off of what James was saying, this idea of kind of giving, also giving what you needed in your life, giving what was missing for you to somebody else or to something else, to a movement, to anything. And that is something that I get reminded of seeing this, you know, having been with the show for a long time, but it's always something sort of in that vein. And it's so interesting. I feel like in the work that all that all of you do, it's somehow about, and also in your friendship with Eve, it's about making space for people to be who they are. Like you know, being a, a, a platform or an area where people can reach out to in whatever space they are, documenting precise moments in people's lives where they can be where they are. I wonder, and you having worked on this play for so long that's so much about giving voice and telling stories. I wonder if you could all just talk about what it means to give that kind of space or make space for people to tell their stories. I think I want to go back to answer that in a mm. roundabout way or perhaps not a direct way. Mm. Um, <laughs> and that has to do with uh, going back to when I met Eve again and that uh, there's an or almost an organicness to, the, the, to answer that question in a way to look at it is that after even I recognize the commonalities in our work and um, in our desire to unravel violence and empower women, is that we move forward into that, okay? So we rode trains to Washington to protest together, and we were at women's shelters together, and we started peace camps in parks in New York City in protest of nuclear armament. And we went to Berlin together where you've had her first memories, and then we moved on into other contexts, into Haiti, and to Ciudad Juarez, and to the Democratic Republic of Congo. So that, what, I, what I'm speaking to is a way of falling in activist love with each other. And if you talk, I don't know, when you talk about making space, that's the first thing that came up, so I'm going with it. So I fell in activist love with Eve. <laughs> and I, it's somehow like looking at this, wonderful audience, people here, friends here tonight, is that I offer that in a way because I think it's, it's the solidarity um, and of my friends up on stage with me that creates a space, but it's not the space, it's really the spaciousness that we need to give each other to move forward um, Yeah, in solidarity. Um, I think in terms of creating space, you know, for me, it's really been able to help Eve facilitate 
her, this journey and sort of be there to really back her up um, in a way that has opened my mind and my heart um, to the world, yeah. really. And um, I think that, you know, there are different ways to do this. You know, there are ways that, that you know, Eve does this, that James and Paula do this, and, you know, it doesn't always mean being the creative person in the front. You know, it's it's also, there are ways to, you know, I work at V-Day with an incredible team of people who, who, you know, facilitating, vi you know, somebody's vision and, and contributing to it as well. You know, that's how you really make space for it and, and just doing the work. Yeah. And, you know, it's what, it's, it, that's it. It's doing the work. It's just being able to serve in the way that you can because we're so lucky to be doing the things that we're doing. I mean, you know. Yeah. It sounds like it's also about then, as, you, as Paula was talking about, just the solidarity, being united in the same mission and Absolutely. knowing that everybody has their different place and way to participate within that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, just to add to that, I think that one of the things that, um, you know, I, I, I just know that one of the things that Eve has done for me is she's given me the space mm. to actually be vulnerable, to uh, explore my creativity, to you'd be supportive in enterprises. And I think it's what we all do for each other as friends, mm. which is to be able to give each other space. And from that, then you realize the value of that, like in, in my own creative life and in my own emotional life and life of my soul. Mm. And then you want to give that to other people, mm. right? You want to go out and find people who don't have the space, mm. who, where it hasn't been made. And you want to say, like, this is where you can be fully alive in this space, mm. right? You just want to be a friend to other people. Yeah. And we, we had a conversation with Eve um, last week as well. And I'm wondering for all of you guys, we were talking a lot about just pain and trauma and kind of the barriers to things that we want to do or aspire to do. I wonder what things you found are the barriers to making that space or the things that we all can push through in order to be that support, support system for other people? That is an amazing question. <laughs> and, and it, but here's one of the biggest things that I, 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 I um, there are two things that come to mind. And I'm sure once I start talking, they'll think of other things, because it's a really good question. But the first one is, it can't be done. Like, people just go to, like, it just, you can't, you can't do it. You can't, like, just, go and create that space for people, right? And the second one is, on some level, those people don't deserve it. Like, whoever that is. Like, I work with young people, right? So people think, like, oh, young people. Like, you know, oh, adolescents, right? Oh, teenagers. But they don't go, like, oh, my God, teenagers, right? Like, they just, oh, my God, adolescents. What an amazing period of life. And it's, it's, I feel like sometimes that's what I'm up against, is that people don't, understand the value of who you're trying to make space for, right? The really beautiful value of those people. Yeah, and it's so interesting. You know, we talk a lot about um, what it means to rewrite different narratives. Like, if we could change our narrative about things, how would it help us kind of progress to, to, to be able to make actual progress? And it sounds like that's a thing that, if you could, you would rewrite the way that we're thinking about adolescence or, yeah. Yeah, are there other things for you guys in the work that you're doing, things that would help to reframe or if you could rewrite a narrative that you think would help people move forward or get closer together or whatever it is? I think that I'm talking about V-Day and talking about even sort of the philosophy of the movement is that um, the question is always, what do you need? Mm. What, what can we do for you? We go, many people go and human rights workers <coughs> go and NGOs go and have, under the assumption that we know what's best for you. Mm. And the, and the philosophy has been so powerful, traveling with Eve in all these places and, and watching, watching her show up and the team show up and the grassroots activists there and saying, what, what do you need? Tell us what you need and then we'll be there for you and we'll do that. Mm -hmm. And when you really start to do that, you get yourself out of the way. And sometimes the greatest spaciousness is that you, you, you get out of the way. Mm -hmm. Right? You provide what is needed. Like, look at what's happening in the DRC, you know, with Christine and all the incredible Congolese people who are running the city of joy now. There are no people from outside running the city of joy. We can come and I can photograph, I can use the images, which I do, to gain support, to gain money. 
and Eve can go there, and she does, and, and, and show support and love and solidarity and continue to provide what they need. Um, I think... I think one thing that you know I think you hear a lot is, well, you're not really going to be able to make any change. Like, really, what are you doing? You know, what are you? I mean, one person, four people, three people, and what I believe is that, sure, will things in my lifetime turn around immediately? No, but am I sprinkling the seeds? to grow something that maybe a hundred years, you know, it's, it may not happen Absolutely. tomorrow. Yeah. It may not happen next week. It may not happen in our lifetime, mm -hmm. but I think that that sort of like, well, what are you really doing? You're, are you really gonna, are you really gonna make a difference? Mm -hmm. If it makes a difference in the tiny, in a fraction of whatever it is you're doing, yeah. that's something I think that's a really big block for people because mm -hmm. people don't think that they can do anything. And, mm -hmm. You know, if you have a conversation with somebody and they leave and they start thinking about something different, you've done something. There, that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know. I think it's 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 such a yeah, it's such a beautiful point too. You know, there's a phrase. I'm sure I'm going to get the tree wrong, but there's some sort of phrase that it takes like seven years for an olive tree to grow. It's like you plant the seed and it it won't bear you know the fruit necessarily right away. It's like we're surrounded by this amazing garden. How long did it take for these? beautiful plants to grow around us. And certainly, I mean, the work that you've been doing at the Trevor Project over the past 20 years, I'm sure it has shifted and changed as the country has shifted and changed as well. But you well. know, speaking of turning the narrative, I just remember 20 years ago, this month, sitting in the audience at the Hammerstein Ballroom and watching my friends stand up on a, a, a stage and say, uh, declaring that we were gonna end violence against women and girls, and mm -hmm. I thought, Okay, she crazy, <laughs> you know. And but I also, I mean, and, and I was also filled with pride and and you know her at her courage. But I think what's happening now, it's taken twenty years for mm -hmm. this to actually take root and mm -hmm. to begin to, like, generation after generation and generation, like they they keep coming up mm -hmm. with a new idea and a fresher idea, so that it allows for the change that we're seeing happen now. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions as well. Um, any questions from the house for these amazing folks up here? Yes. For those interested in participating in, let's say, the um, Eve movement, how does one participate? Uh, she just has a question about how one can participate in this movement. Sure, so uh, there are many ways. <laughs> Vide.org. Um, you can put on a production or participate in a production of the Vagina Monologues in February this year. We extend it into March uh, because it is the 20th anniversary. Um, and so for the month of February and March, people do the play all over the world. Um, we have, you know, there are thousands of productions that are happening and we give the play, Eve is given the play without paying for the rights. Uh, to do a V-Day event. You, the money you raise from that event goes right back into the community on the ground. 90% of what, what is raised in that production, 10% then comes to V-Day, and we give that money away to an area that we're spotlighting or highlighting that particular year. Um, there, you can also donate. You can also just keep in touch. There is uh, City of Joy and One Billion Rising org. You can do a rising event. There are thousands and hundreds of thousands of risings happening right now all over the world where people are standing up, um, standing up against violence, standing up uh, and resisting um, so many so many different things. And you can go to our websites, you can find those events, you can participate in them. So there's, there's a bunch of ways. And there's also the City of Joy documentary is coming out at some point. Yes, there is a documentary year. coming out on City of Joy, TBD, that's all we can say, <laughs> but it's happening. Um, and it's, it's a really beautiful, beautiful piece. Amazing. Yeah, any other questions? Yes. Just a simple one. What are the red buttons you're wearing? Oh, um, I'm very <laughs> proud to say that it was my idea. Because <laughs> I'm a boaster. Um, it says Cindy. A and I made them when they were up in uh, Cambridge. Because I, I just love the story of Cindy so much. And I love the idea of um, just celebrating Cin not only that Cindy, but all the Cindys in the world, you know? So we had them made, and I think, aren't there some scattered about? There are some yeah. scattered about if you found them. Yeah. <laughs> that Cindy button could be yours. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. I'd like to know if you think 
my reasoning has any validity. Yes. English, <laughs> English language, when the word man was put into the English language, they obviously had to create a word uh, for the opposite sex. It can't be a coincidence. The word, they just added a W-O, because womp, 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 man. Is it, is that the way officially, or that's just some nonsense that I created? It's a coincidence, it means nothing. Here's a ling linguistic question, I think. Um, <laughs> I think it's above our pay grade, actually. <laughs> I, I think our, our, that's above our linguistic pay grade. But I, 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 I guess the, the question is uh, where, the, how the word, I think we could, we could solve this by just going to etymology.com and, and finding out how the word woman came about. Also, it is a good question. I don't think, does anybody know how the word woman came about? No. Okay. No oh, wait a minute, somebody up there. My recollection is woe means of, so woman is of. Oh. Oh. So disappointing. Such a disappointing. Wait, what? Oh, man. There is actually, I'll, you, I'll, give, you like a, there's a, I'll give a plug to a podcast. It. There's a podcast on now. Have you guys heard of this? And there's a, a woman, she's like this incredible um, linguist. And all she, this is all she does is each episode is the evolution of a different word. So I think we should write into her. Yeah. 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 I think it's worth one. Yeah. That the word woman came first. <laughs> and the word man was a shortening lesser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll report that back to Eve. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Uh, yes, ma'am. Have you, any of you been to the City of Joy and what is it like? She's asking if anyone's been to the City of Joy and what's it like? Um, yes, I've been to the City of Joy many times. And um, I went the first time that, before there was a City of Joy, so I was traveling to the Democratic Republic of Congo with Eve prior to the building, during the building, and now after. Is it after. Um, it's an extraordinary victory in an extraordinarily devastating, continuing devastating, brutal um, environment of war and barbary against women and children. And that hasn't stopped. But City of Joy provides a place for women to go and heal and learn skills. I mean, it's in the play, so I don't, you know, that was really talked about in the play. It is, um, I would say if I, if I it, the term the privilege in my life, one of the greatest privileges is being able to go there and be with women who, no matter what, exemplify the, the most greatest courage and determination to move on with their lives and become leaders, as I said, in a situation that continues to be horrific. And the women who work at the City of Joy are extraordinary leaders um, who have managed to come through with their own trauma and work to heal the other women who come for the programs for City of Joy. And you can read you know, about that on the site. It would be wonder if, wonderful if you all did learn more about it. But it is, it is an incredible center of beauty in the midst of um, some, some horrific how do you keep Poor. it safe? Is it gated? Or? It's gated. The city, the, the, the place where the women are, that they, um, the center of the city of joy is surrounded. The one image that you saw shows an shows a entrance way to city of joy. And there are guards and also an effective way to, to secure what can be a very insecure place is also you have the people surrounding who live around it, who feel like they're participating in the city of joy, or they're benefiting from the city of joy. So I, the idea is also to create safety surrounding the city of joy also. And I think, um, I don't know the exact number, but I believe over a thousand women have gone, have gone through the city of joy, so they're doing really incredible work. Um, ah, yes, our last question. Yeah, to, to add to her question and what we were just talking about, how do we specifically support city of joy in that? Um, yeah, that's a great question. I think, you know, there's, there's, again, there's a couple ways. There is, you know, City of Joy, a dot org website, which is off of vday.org, and, you know, you could contribute, you could make a donation. 
Um, and, I, and I also think another way is to get the word out about what's happening and that when the documentary comes out, you know, if you go to vday.org and you sign up for what we call a V-mail, all, everything that's happening, you will, you will hear about in V-mail. So when the documentary comes out, you would hear about them, but it's really important to get the message out there. And, but, but other than that, you know, a contribution. City of Joy is, as you've said, it is run, it was built by Congolese women. It's run by Congolese. We just raise funds to support it, so. Yeah, and, and just, to, just to wrap things up too, um, these, these conversations, uh, the Beyond the Stage conversations, I think we still have about five or six more over the course of the next couple weeks. Even if you don't see a sh if you go to the MTC website and you see someone that you want to come and hear a conversation with them, you don't have to buy another ticket to the play, just come to the show afterwards and you're welcome to join any talk back um, that's, that's coming Sorry, yeah. there are pamphlets, pamphlets that are right by the company manager's door next to the bar which are City of Joy pamphlets, and so there's mm -hmm. all information in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, just on behalf of MTC, I just want to say a very special thank you to Jan Warner, who has been sponsoring these amazing talkbacks in memory of her husband, Arthur Warner, um, and also just to thank these three wonderful, amazing people for their friendship and openness, um, and just thank you for being here and sharing your stories with us. Yeah, thank you.